All right. If you're watching these in order, we are going through the main roads, and we've covered Chapter 16. We've got a few places where I've said I'm going to come back and talk about that more. So, I would like to do that. We have four mini-lectures. I'm hoping they will be five minutes each. We'll see if I can talk that fast. Uh, but mostly, I want you to be able to get these concepts. But these are sidebars with particular topics. One sidebar is we talked about digesting sugars. And you might know someone with lactose intolerance. There are many different forms of lactose intolerance. One of them is galactosemia. Or actually, there are, um, there, there are different forms. Technically, you have galactose intolerance. And then you have lactose intolerance. We're going to talk about galactose intolerance first. Galactose intolerance is just where you have a defect in one of the enzymes that takes galactose and puts it into the pathway. You don't even need to um, remember that we talked about how galactose is first phosphorylated by a kinase, then you put a UDP on it, then you epimerize it. Those are three enzymes, three steps, and maybe you have a mutation in one of those enzymes. If you do, you're mostly okay. But you can't take galactose and you can't put it through glycolysis. You have to just excrete it. In cases where you eat a food with a lot of galactose, that causes a problem. So this is galactose intolerance, different from lactose intolerance because lactose is a disaccharide that includes galactose, so they overlap. But if you have an infant with galactosemia, they cannot drink lactose because it includes galactose as one of the two subunits. They cannot drink milk, and if they have a particularly severe form, it builds up and actually causes cataracts in them. It's one of the reasons why we want to do newborn testing to look for metabolic, uh, if they're missing a metabolic enzyme, well, then we can control that by controlling their diet. We want to make sure we don't give them galactose. We can give them other forms of carbon. But the big one is lactose intolerance, which is um, more, uh, it's, it's farther upstream, right? It's not a problem with a monosaccharide. It's a problem with a disaccharide. And so it's a problem with the lactase that cuts the disaccharide into two monosaccharides, glucose and galactose. So here you'll have a problem. You can drink galactose, other things with galactose in them, just fine. It's just the lactose that will give you a problem. And uh, so just remember that we talked about this in Chapter 14. Uh, remember that dye and polysaccharides, you don't have machinery for processing those. You only have machinery for processing monosaccharides, and really for processing glucose, you could argue fructose as well but you need to break them down to be able to break them down further. And so, for example, you in saliva, you have an amylase that will actually start to break down the starch, start to chop it up, even before it gets to your stomach. So throughout your system, you have a lot of glycosidases that will break down things into the smaller units. So for lactose, we didn't evolve drinking milk, okay? In the, um, in the savannah, when the hunter-gatherers were going around, uh, they didn't really domesticate cattle early on. So they didn't get a, that much milk. You, of course, you drank it as a mammal when you're a baby. But then you are weaned, and then you get your carbon from other sources. So it turns out that if you have an enzyme that's never used, your body will get rid of it. It might deliberately turn it off, or it might just that you have a mutation in it, but it doesn't bother you because the mutation never has a chance to show. If you never drink lactose, then you'll never know that you have lactose intolerance. And why should your body keep a lactase around if you're, uh, if you're never needing it? And so a lot of mammals will actually lose their lactase activity as they grow. And that means that uh, the lactose is, uh, the lactase is often uh, encounters lactose in the gut. And so uh, you can actually have lactases on the villi. And if you look really closely at this, I'm sorry if it's a little bit small, but I'll go ahead and tell you, this is where they have an antibody with a gold particle. So there are little tiny specks that you can see on one side. And on the left, they have a normal section of villi where the antibody with its gold particle is binding to the villi, and you can see there's specks all over those villi. That means there are lactases on the surface of the, of the villi that start to break down the uh, disaccharide before it even gets into the body, but gets past the gut barrier, right? If you look on B on the right, if you can zoom in maybe, 
you can see that there aren't as many specs. There's only a couple. There are not lactase enzymes in that person. And so this is a, a sign of somebody who just doesn't make their lactase anymore. And if you don't make the lactase, then if you drink lactose, you'll be intolerant of it. You'll have a buildup of a molecule you aren't using. And if your only option is to excrete it, it will build up and it will cause problems if there's too much of it. So what's interesting is lactose tolerance. You have populations that started to depend on domesticated mammals for carbon sources. So they started to drink lactase after being weaned for the rest of their life. And so lactose, they actually, as a population, evolved lactose tolerance. How did this happen? And when did it happen? And uh, given that people domesticated cattle and other mammals in different times in different parts of the world, you can hypothesize that this would have happened at different times in widely separated populations. But did it happen the same way twice? It actually did. So the mutation that keeps the lactase turned on, you can trace the time of that mutation back, and you can see in, Euro in a population of Europeans five to 6,000 years ago, that lactase was mutated to be kept on. And you put that together with cattle, archeological evidence that cattle were domesticated 9,000 years ago. Makes perfect sense. Cattle were domesticated and people ended up with more carbon, more energy, and they survived more because they domesticated cattle and drank milk. So um, realize that it takes a couple thousand years for evolution to kick in at this, you know, this is not epigenetics, this is actual evolution. So uh, Africans didn't have this mutation, but they also domesticated cattle. So that's a bit of a puzzle. So they went searching for what other mutations do the African uh, Africans have. And they found that actually, yeah, there were three to 6,000 year old mutations that also kept lactase turned on. They were just in a different place, but they were also on the regulatory genes. You know, So the function of these, two different technical mutations, but the same function of those. Both of these populations converged on lactose tolerance. And that's the thing. They had a carbon source, they survived better, and they ended up having the same effect two different ways. But what matters is that evolution converged on the solution of keeping your lactase turned on so that you could tolerate lactose. Very cool. And I just think that that's cool. You can actually look for these genes now. And for example, the 5,000 year old, they had this body of this, uh, this body found in ice. They analyzed its genes and they found that he was lactose intolerant. They also could tell from his genes, he had brown eyes, brown hair and type O blood. And uh, the, the genes, the, this is another indication that the timeline that we got of it happening five to 6,000 years ago in different populations is about right. And in fact, we can look for where lactase was actually uh, kept on, lactose tolerance evolved. And you see that there's a hot spot in Northern Europe. There's a hot spot in Western Africa. And you can also look and see that there's a hot spot on the Sinai Peninsula. All of these are places where you had farming and agriculture first start to happen. So after that, the bodies evolved over thousands of years to be able to tolerate the lactose better. Now, of course, we don't have to depend on evolution. We can do biochemistry and we can like make, we can get rid of the lactose from milk so that somebody who's lactose intolerant can still drink it. But if you're a lactose intolerant person, uh, just know that it's not your fault. Um, it's just your body trying to be efficient and trying to survive on older food patterns than, uh, than we have to follow today.